today's episode, we're going to be talking about the top five enemies of the gods. Skull. Skull. You don't know me. A skull. The man. Welcome back, travelers, to another Viking Top 5 video. In today's episode, we talk about the top five enemies of the Azer God, to be specific, because we don't want to talk about the other gods. They are going to make an appearance, yeah, but... one of them does. Should be very interesting. I am joined today by Mr. Andrew Valkowskis. And I am here with the Hitman Ken. That's me, the Hitman. We are going to be talking about not just gods in general. Any type of enemies of the Azer God should be very interesting. Any type of enemy that caused problems. So that's going to be really cool. We're going to start off... Number five. You probably guessed it. It's Loki. Mm -hmm. So Loki was a member of the Azer gods. Yes. However, he was not a, uh, let's say, a blood native of the yes. Azer tribe. He was actually a fire giant, which is, we got a whole video yes, about his his ancestry. We're definitely going to link it if you guys want to check that out. Very good, very good video. Loki, as much as he helped the Azer gods with many, many problems that they ran into, he also stuck it to them quite a few times and, and just really memorable. In our terms, we call him a troll, right? He's kind of a... Prank. He trolled them? He trolled them pretty good. Okay, so let's start with the first one. You, you tell me if it's a troll. So okay. Sif yes. um, was known for her most beautiful hair of mm -hmm. any of the Asgardians. And her husband was none other than Mr. Angry Thor. Thor. And what does Loki do? Grabs his hair clippers, bzzz, shaves her head. Sounds like a troll to me. Okay, can you imagine the next morning? Oh my god. All right, so... Game over, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of a, a, a series of events, which led him to go see the dwarves. And with the dwarves, he asked them to reforge the uh, a wig for her. And then that started a huge war between the dwarves in terms of who was going to make the best the... magical items. Oh. So, you know, he went to go see the, the sons of Ivaldi, but then we had a couple of other ones that decided, hey, you know, we're going to outdo what the first ones did and loki backed the first ones and so he had a stake in the game mm. so he went over and messed up mjolnir and those dwarves to make sure that they lose so this was a series of events that loki was kind of like sticking it to the azer and the azer did not get the best items out of the dwarves the next thing that he did that caused a huge problem were his children oh, so with angraboda yeah. he had these three wonderful children hell Fenrir and Jormungand. Each one of them caused a massive problem with the Aesir. So uh, Hel, I mean, Odin was totally afraid of her. He said to Hel with you, I'm exiling you out of Asgard. Unintended. Yep. Fenrir was destined to devour Odin. Uh, so he ended up finding out about this. They said, we've got to chain this guy up. We can't kill him. He's too powerful. So they chained him up in Asgard. Uh, and that's a whole story in itself. And then Jormungand and Thor got into a little bit of a kerfuffle. So was... Jormungand is the giant snake that's uh, around the world. The Midgard, right? serpent. The Midgard serpent. Exactly. The Midgard serpent. So uh, he spawned a bunch more problems. And then obviously, the, you know, the, the cherry on the Sunday, if we're going to fast forward, is him killing Baldur. Yep. Or not directly killing Baldur, but having a, a big piece of the strategy. He yeah, he, he kind of orchestrated the thing. Yes, so that's not the end. They end up imprisoning him. He ends up escaping during Ragnarok and is foretold that he will sail the ship of toenails against Asgard, Nagalfar. So, yeah, as much as he's one of them, he's also against them. Mm -hmm. Number four, we're talking about other gods now. We're going to talk about the... Vanyar gods, Vanyar gods, Ooh, right? Vanyar gods, so the old the ones. Vanyar gods are the old ones. Well, well, I mean, it's a debate, right? Mm -hmm. We don't really know if the Azer gods are first or the Vanyar gods, you know, chicken or the egg first, kind of. But we're going to talk about why they're very, very big enemies. They were basically at war for the longest time. And the main, main, I guess, climax to the war or the story, what caused the end of the war was basically the, the Vanyar gods are like, release the Kraken. Oh, yeah, Golveg. Goveg. I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but they released Goveg. Essentially, what she did is she instilled greed and paranoia to all the Asgardians. She went to Asgard, so everybody was going crazy, leading to chaos, to the point where Odin had to shoot his spear three times to kill her. Yeah. And after that, they burned her body, but couldn't burn everything. The heart was left, and believe it or not... Hmm, yummy morsel. Loki went and ate the heart. Um, yum, yum, yum. Um, num, num, num. Ate it up real good. What happened to him after? Mm. We got a video about That's that. That's going to be for another video. I can't spoil that now, nope. right? So because of that, there was a truce. And during the truce, what happened was they had to send some hostages, we'll say. you know, Exchange of hostages. Exchange of hostages. So, you know, they sent Frey, Freya, and Nord. Njord, sorry, my bad. Njord. 
So those are the three best of the best, top of the line. Send them all to the Asgard. Asgardian. So who does Odin send? Uh, some some scrubs. <laughs> it's two of their worst. Literally, like, bottom of the barrel. Why are they even gods? Like, to the point where the Vanyar guards are like, you know what? Schlack! Beheaded one of them. Sent it back to Odin, which also... Is if you guys play the God of War game, you'll know who we're talking about. We're not gonna talk about it now. It's gonna be Mimir. An, oh, Mimir he spoiled it. We'll talk about it in another video. But okay. that was a, a, a different, a different story there. So that was a very, very unique uh, story, and that's why they are the enemies to the Azure Guard. Oh yeah, so. long, long protracted war. They have to make number four. Number three, we're gonna go way back to the creation myths, and we're talking about Ymir and the Rhymeotans. So, before... The Frost Giants. Yeah, yeah, the Frost Giants. So, Ymir was the progenitor of their entire race. He was the Alpha. And when he appeared, he basically subjugated the Azer gods, which weren't many at the time. No. I mean, we had like a lineage of two generations before yeah. Odin and, and the rest of them. And so he subjugated them and uh, treated them very, very poorly. Also, one of the ice giants decided to marry one of the Aesir, and that was just a, no, no, mm -mm. A, a bad deal. So she got punished big time. She was Odin's mom. We've got another video about this whole genealogy. Yeah. And so Odin and his brothers, Vili and Ve, ended up killing Ymir. That just created this huge torrent of blood that almost wiped out all of the Rhyme mm -hmm. But they managed a comeback. And with their comeback... There, obviously, there was a lot of bad blood. They said, you know, we need revenge. And so there's just a s series of stories, one after another after another, of, you know, the Rhyme Mutants either, like, attacking Asgard, trying to negotiate, like, you know, unfair deals with the Aesir for work done, trying to steal a certain maidens from Asgard. They stole Mjolnir, Thor's hammer in one of the stories. So it just sets up this huge cycle of revenge coming from the Rhyme Mutants just because of all of this Ymir drama at the beginning of time. Seems, it's, in my opinion, it seems like a, a fair fair deal. <laughs> Essentially, Ymir created a lot of things with his body, so that was kind of kind of useful. In my That's opinion. true. He, he, his body was made into the universe. Well, number two is none other than Surt and the son of Muspelheim, which is also the fire giants. So if you guys are not aware, look at his shirt. This is who we're talking about. He the is big man. A super fire giant. He's the leader of them. So essentially what happened was he went to Asgard. First thing he destroyed, the Bifrost. The Bifrost is essentially the bridge from Asgard out that basically lets him go anywhere. So that's the first thing they did. Proceed, destroyed. Destroyed. Proceeded what? afterwards with his crazy fire sword, flash and destroy Asgard. Just like in the movie, which is kind of... Yeah. Kinda, that's kind of relevant, actually. We'll the, give Marvel the, the props on yeah, that one. They actually slashed it, so that was, that was pretty cool. But then, Asgard burns. And Asgard burned. And then afterwards, cut the sky. And then he ended the world by cutting the world tree. So literally, he kind of ended the world. So that's... And this is what Odin wanted to like stop. Yes. He wanted to stop Ragnarok. He wanted to stop, obviously, this this last cataclysmic event. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess, I guess that tops Ymir. That's, that's pretty big. But wouldn't that be number one? I feel like that would be number one. Considering it's literally ending the world. How can you be a bigger enemy of the Aesir gods if you literally destroyed my world and the world itself? Number one. None other than Nidhogg, the World Tree Devourer. Mm. So, the World Tree Devourer predates pretty much everyone except probably the Fire Giants, which are on the same page. So, you look at the creation myths, Niflheim, Realm of Ice, Fire Giants, they crash together. From there, the steam rises, and you've got just the Fire Giants and Nidhogg at the beginning of time. Nidhogg then starts gnawing on the World Tree, ends up creating this rot throughout the entire universe. And this has an impact on everything, every world. But obviously the Aesir being at the apex, this causes the biggest problem for Odin, who wants to control destiny and deal with everything. What was Odin's big shtick? Valhalla and the Valkyries, right? He really Absolutely. loved that. So what ended up happening was Nidhogg, how did he feed himself? On the souls of the dead. So he would end up sucking all of the souls of the dead to sustain himself, meaning he would end up denying Odin and Valhalla all of the Einherjar. So it became a nemesis that was going on over and over. So one, he's as old as time itself. Yep. Two, he's destroying Yggdrasil. And some people say even like Surt destroys the tree so it doesn't become a perversion of what Nidhogg is. Three, he fights the Valkyries for the souls of the dead because he wants to devour them. And four, here's the kicker. After Ragnarok, 
one of the last stanzas in the Voluspa is he rises from the ashes. How do you get more badass than that? This is the guy that sees everything, sees the gods come into their own, torments them throughout their entire existence, watches their entire civilization burn to the ground, and he survives it. That is ridiculous. That is kind of insane. I thought for sure Cert was number one, but that definitely, definitely tops it. Like, comes back from the dead. That was the kicker. Came back from the dead. He's like, yeah, you thought you can kill me? Not today. So that's pretty insane. Yeah, and he was trapped in the Virgil beer, and that was his kind of realm. I think it's worth doing a video about this guy For because sure. he he's such an interesting character. He becomes one of the big nemesis nemesis of yeah. the fate of the Norns universe. Yeah. Um, so we we give him a whole backstory and a, a more of a raison d'être in terms yeah. of why he does the things that he does. Yeah. It's an interesting character to explore, and same thing with certain the relationship with them from the beginning of time, right? Well, literally anybody on this list could be its own video, right? There's so Absolutely. much, so much background. If you guys want to spe see a specific, let us know yeah, let in us the know. comments below. We'll definitely do it. So that's it for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you guys want to get posted on future videos, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget the Patreon. We give you your sneak peek ahead of time. Ready? Skull. Skull. Safe travels. Oh,